How's it going, buddy? Sir, working to build that community law for discussion for providing specifications you can relate to so you can have an educated decision on your purchases. So we're going to go through a few things. I figured I'd just do this live. Uh, so I voided my warranty on my CRKT Provoke uh, because, um, well, I had it deploy in my pocket. And then, uh, surprise me, uh, Joe uh, Caswell uh, reached out to me on Instagram and then kind of discussed a few things and some things that uh, might be able to adjust on it as well as a spring and then also for any of these little pivots. Uh, so that was kind of an interesting thing to actually I'd be able to actually message with the designer of the knife. That uh, was a pretty cool uh, thing to actually experience. Uh, so that's one thing that um, uh, this one, uh, it started out with a pull or a deployment of about um, two um, two pounds. Uh, so using the trigger pull gauge, actually pulling down actually on how, how it deployed. What's up, Zach? Uh, so actually deploying it. Uh, so is that actually about two pounds? Uh, so that was not very much. Um, so I did have it deploy in my pocket. Um, and it's kind of odd to try and get a fully deployed uh, knife out of your pocket um, when it's like this. And then it kind of caught on it. Um, yeah, it's a little dangerous when we're waving in the pocket. I uh, guess normal wave feature, I mean, the tip of the blade is already out of out of your pocket. Uh, this one, um, if you're waving it, um, you're waving it, um, basically it deploys into your pocket. So it's probably not the best thing to do. Uh, but if you commit to it, it does work. Uh, so uh, that first time I did it, when it actually got stuck, um, I didn't commit to waving it out and just pulling the thing. Uh, so uh, that was um, somewhat my fault. Uh, so, uh, But uh, it did have a low um, uh, detent on it. So even uh, Joe said that it's probably a little bit low. Uh, he thinks that it should be a little bit higher. And then uh, he also thought it was a good idea because then I basically gave him the weight as far as what it was. And he's like, oh, that's actually probably a good idea to let like CRKT know as far as what a standard would be. Like I want the deployment on my knives to be at three pounds, four pounds. Um, so uh, that was kind of interesting to be able to actually uh, give him some input on it. And it seemed like he thought it was a good idea because uh, not a lot of folks use the tr trigger pull gauge uh, for um, knives. Uh, so that's something that I did use. So uh, if you did actually do uh, pick this up, uh, there is going to be a spring in here. I'm sorry, that's not going to be really easy to see, uh, but there's a spring in here. So in the deployment, now you can kind of see uh, the mechanism moving uh, slightly, possibly. Um, but <laughs> thanks. Yeah, hey, you give it a go as far as some of the information, uh, Zach. But uh, so there's a spring in there, uh, so you can take that out. Uh, and then actually you know, make your adjustments to it. So I started with a two pound, um, I finished it out uh, and actually had it now, I think three pounds, four ounces as far as the actual deployment. Uh, so uh, now it has a three pound, four ounce um, pull. So basically taken out of my pocket without intentionally doing a trigger pull. I mean, I'm a, a wave feature, uh, then it should not deploy my pocket, hopefully. And even he said like a lot of times, um, and when you're actually taking it out of your pocket to kind of rotate it away to actually pull it out so you don't catch this knuckle and actually deploy it uh, if you do not want to do that, um, that is. Uh, so that's one thing I did with that. And then with that improvement or that um, the detent, uh, I actually did also change uh, the lock bar side. Uh, so, uh, so there's another thing that I avoided my warranty on. So if I send it back to CRKT, they'll be like, well, you already messed with it. So we're not going to help you out at all. Uh, so I did take a little jumble bit. And then, uh, so this was kind of a straight edge. Um, this is actually the the, um, the lock bar. So I did actually round that out a little bit because uh, um, I got like a, I mean, you can probably see it right there, but there's like a blister on my thumb. Uh, so that is from uh, trying to take that out. And so actually working that lock. Um, and then with that straight edge, I mean, it was digging right into it. It still digs into my finger, uh, but uh, that's something that is uh, better uh, with the rounded edge than a straight edge. So it did uh, make that, uh, so increased detent uh, and also uh, rounded out that edge. So I'm gonna put the pocket clip back on. Sorry about that, hit the little stand. So if you haven't seen the pocket clip before, uh, Zach had it on his channel as well. Um, so I did take it off of there um, to actually do the access to uh, that spring. Uh, so if you ever pick this little knife up, uh, there's actually, um, this is how you get to that spring. Um, hey, what's up? And you're actually saying something, uh, Mr. Something Basic. 
That's awesome. If you didn't know, I mean, when he started to chat on channels and comment on videos, like you'd just have like a like a like a fist bump or something like that. He never said anything. I mean, he was just like cool or something else, and he actually started to use words, which was pretty awesome. Um, but no, we'll actually put this back on there. It actually covers it up as far as the the spring. So that's how that goes back on there. So three springs on it. Uh, it has a little bit uh, uh, going pretty good. Um, so uh, voided my warranty on this knife. Worked on a few things. Kind of frustrating because you're trying to figure out uh, how it actually works. Um, and then uh, in doing that. But I was able to tighten up uh, the, the little linkages. Uh, which is pretty good. What's up, Weto? I think it's Weto. Uh, but let's see. So in adjusting these little um, pivot arms... So that was another thing that I had an issue with this one. Well, not issue, but it was not the best. Uh, there was still um, some play on it. Uh, now there's no play. Um, so now the one that uh, Zach had, he didn't have any play on it. So I just have bad luck with knives. So sometimes they just come to me and they just aren't fantastic. Uh, so it did have play on it. Uh, so to adjust these, uh, so these are lock screws. Uh, so on the back side um, here, um, they're, they're basically the lock screws. And then the front side is the adjustment. Uh, so, so his um, lock screws came out on his a little bit. Uh, so he had it actually contact the frame, but they replaced it, which is awesome. Uh, but these screws are not the hardest. And then a regular screwdriver um, is not exactly the right width. Uh, so also a recommendation is if you want to really work on these, uh, you probably take a regular screwdriver and grind it down a little bit to actually work with this and actually be the right width on it. Um, so, so you would loosen that up. Yeah, so CQT was great, as Zach said. So that's really good because sometimes they are uh, not the most, they don't work with you the best on it. Uh, but so you back these out if you want to adjust it. And then this is the side you would actually do uh, to screw it down. Uh, this one uh, was loose, so that's where my uh, play was coming from. And then so I tightened that one. Uh, and then I took this one out because I wanted to try and take apart the knife entirely. And that was tough. I mean, they put on some good Loctite on that. Um, it, it was, I was worried I was going to strip this one out. Uh, but it came out, this one came out. So now I'm to the point where I can take these out. These are stuck. I'm not taking these out because they're, I tried. And I'm not going to pull it anymore or try and do that anymore. Uh, but uh, I was able to make the adjustment. So if you do pick this one up, so these are lock screws. So you just back it out a little bit. Uh, and then the actual uh, tightening would be on these here to tighten down any of the linkages. Uh, so right now I have this one up and running. Um, I might pick up, uh, I think it was another viewer recommended uh, doing a full, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty smooth. I and mean, even with the detent change, so it does deploy um, quite a bit more with authority, um, which is something nice. Yeah, next time heat it up, but that's a better way to do it with the, like a soldering iron or soldering gun. Um, but yeah, that one was, yeah, it was just really tight. Uh, but uh, that's how this works. But I think I think I might pick up a, a Kydex sheath for, sheath for it. They don't make any right now, but then I guess there's some of the custom makers that will do that. Because um, even though I tighten it up, I have a stronger detent on it. I don't exactly trust this in my pocket. Um and it takes up a lot of space, so I think this would be better um, on a belt. Uh, so like you hold it on your belt loop or a belt mount, and then you can take it off. And then that way, you could probably have it wave at that point when you're doing that. Um, because this is not exactly a knife that's going to be kind of gentleman's carry. It's going to freak just about everybody out um, in doing it. But I just really like the mechanism for it. Uh, so that's what I did uh, with this one. So warranty's gone on that. Um, also, uh, for this, um, if anybody wants to pick it up, uh, Mass Drop uh, does have this knife on their site now. And then, so even Blade HQ had it for $199, which was the retail price of CRKT. Um, if you want to pick this one up, uh, Mass Drop has it uh, for $140, I think, is the price on that. Um, so you can order it, uh, save like $60 bucks, um, uh, for uh, the Provoke. So that's the way to go if you. 
even if you, I guess even if you wanted it now, other than going to eBay and buying it at an exorbitant amount of price, yeah, great price on it. It really is. Uh, so there's Amazon now. I think had it for one sixty, um, and then Mass Drop, yeah, one forty. Um, so if you are wanting to pick it up, I think it's sold out in most places anyway. So it really doesn't matter now uh, because you're not going to be able to get it. Uh, so going through Mass Drop, then you save sixty bucks, and then that's kind of the way to go. And then um, and then just drinking some tea here. Uh, also now for things going on, uh, we do have. Uh, so still the patina going on this as far as the copper natrix. Uh, I put these out here. Now these are kind of those arc trails ones. I don't really know why I bought these things. I just I bought them just to buy them. I don't think I ever intend to actually use them or carry them, but uh, they're there. Uh, these came in the mail today. Uh, so Nemesis knives. If you guys haven't experienced Nemesis knives, um, they have the, some really good stuff. I mean for. Uh, the price, uh, so you can get them still through White Mountain Knives, uh, as far as uh, some of the new ones. One of the knives here you can't get there yet, uh, but it probably will be on their site uh, later on. Uh, but their quality is really good uh, for uh, the knives here. I don't know which one this one is. So this is going to be the MP, MPR2, VG10, and then G10. And then this one looks like that. And you got the carbon fiber up top. So this is really a good performer. Uh, the one I um, I've been messing around with before um, he was able to send it over uh, was the, their custom, uh, which was the um, was it the Halloween version. Uh, so that had the orange scales, had some jeweling on the inside. That's that one's from uh, Troy Wheatley. But you don't actually need, I, I use my uh, wrist action on that too, but you don't need a wrist action on it. And this is actually a really nice knife. Uh, so uh, I think retail price or MSRP is about 120 You can get about 80 and then 10% off of that. So like 70 uh, 60 something is $70. But overall, I mean, it's a really a nice knife uh, for being uh, one of the production knives that has a good action for it. VG10 uh, on this one. Uh, and then the other one actually is going to be uh, S35 uh, for about the same price. Uh, so it's really a good setup for that. I'll have a full review on it, uh, but I did want to get it up there and uh, thank him for sending the knives over. I guess he did send it over uh, to the channel. And then uh, I'm probably going to have it in the Patreon group. Uh, so Zach, let me know as far as if those are things are something you want to check out too. Because I think I'll send it over to Jack Farmboy first. Uh, because we talked about it for some time before he sent it. And then uh, if the group is interested, I might um, add it to the pass round for it. Uh, and then the pass round group is going, I mean, it's it's going better than I would have thought it would go. I mean, the, the amount of uh, companies that are willing to participate in it, uh, the channels that are willing to participate as well, has been uh, fantastic. Uh, so we're getting a lot of uh, great involvement from folks. So... This is the um, MPR2 uh, for that one. Yeah. And then Steve. So Steve also, uh, so while he's on, so the Blind Knife Review uh, is uh, coming out as of tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, so that's going to be one uh, that is, uh, it's been in the making for some time now. I think we started back in November and then uh, it's been kind of going around it goes to different folks uh, but before that it was still like kind of like figuring it out and then trying to figure out how we're going to do it in the first place uh, and then it really started out uh, for the origin of the blind knife review i uh, started from uh, epic snuggle bunny uh, so i was watching his live stream and then he had like a barney lunchbox and then it was it was that blind knife so he would like stick his hands inside of the box there was like a bag a blade HQ packed it for him, and it was like, oh, that's kind of an interesting idea, but he's kind of like ruffling it in the bag, kind of talking about it, uh, and then so it was kind of taking that iteration to try and figure out, okay, well, how do we do that uh, for um, other things? How how would this pre be presented in a normal format? And then kind of went through different iterations of, okay, well, we'll get a bag, and then uh, film it from the opposite side, hands to the bag, like a little... A uh, film bag or something. Uh, so it was bouncing off of Steve, bouncing off of Jack Farmboy, 
um, even I think um, Blue Car Survival. Uh, so just asking folks about it, like what they thought about it, and then people people were willing to sign on to it. Uh, once we figured out, I mean, we would just want real basic. I mean, it was like the little poster board, like the three uh, panel poster board uh, that's actually like at Walmart, any retail store for like four bucks. And then you punch two holes in it and stick your arms to it. And then uh, you film from the other side where I saw on uh, short card videos, he's filming a little bit from the top. Uh, but that's where I'm just your arms out there. So we basically lose uh, one sense. Uh, so we lost a sense of vision. Uh, and then we just have basically tactile feel, um, being able to hear it, um, and then um, that's about it, because uh, you're not going to use your sense of smell or anything for that. But uh, that's where we had. Uh, it's really, really was a fun activity. So, uh, out of the seven channels that did it, um, all seven channels said that they really had fun with it. Uh, even some are like, "Well, it was more fun than I thought it would be." Uh, so, we are going to be doing a round two. Uh, so round two is uh, being helped out by um, Steve uh, Kluver, uh, and then he has uh, worked with a distributor uh, that's sending um, two knives. So we're actually going to have two of them. Uh, so yeah, blind knife review. Yep, definitely going to be happening. Uh, so that's tomorrow, 4 p.m. So set a notification if you want to do live chat. Uh, some of us have set it up for Premiere, so you can actually do a live chat, and then we can be on that at the same time, watch it together, and you can chat with us. We can chat back and forth uh, for that. Uh, so that's going to be something that's uh, pretty great. And so hopefully it really catches on because it seems like a fun thing. And if it, even if it like falls on its face, like all the reviewers that have done it are already signed up for round two, and we added in uh, folks as well. And then uh, so Zach, you, know, you should be in there, I'm pretty sure. And then uh, we had um, uh, Grateful Panic that added in, and then... Um, We'll see who else. I mean, if anybody else wants to be a part of the Blind Knife Review, uh, send me a message on it, and then we'll work you in um, as that goes, too, because it is fun. Uh, we had, I think, two or three incidents. I almost cut myself personally, uh, so that's something that did happen with that. But we didn't have any major injuries. We didn't have anybody go to the hospital or anything, uh, but it was something that was uh, pretty fun uh, for that. Uh, but... Uh, also, I mean, I guess, so we have that happening. So, Blood Knife Review, tomorrow, watch it, enjoy it, share it, have fun with that whole thing. Uh, but that is happening uh, tomorrow for the Blind Knife Review. Um, so hopefully it goes extremely well. Everybody's filmed, everybody's uh, scheduled or uploaded, uh, so that's ready to go. And, uh, uh, going back to this one, uh, so the, the Nemesis. Uh, so, if, if you haven't picked a ne Nemesis knife up, knife up I would recommend getting it. Uh, this one is actually also one that's um, S35. And then um, their first one for the VG10 tested out fine. I'm going to probably send this one out for knife, uh, the steel testing as well. Uh, but this one is going to be the MPR2 or 3. And then this one is a very nice one. So it kind of reminds me of, uh, it would probably be the Steel Wheel uh, Luso. I believe is the name on that one. Um, but this is probably done better than that. It actually has a real pocket clip and so that huge old plastic, I don't know what else. Uh, so that's where I think this is done better than that. And really, I think this is like um, maybe what Buck should have done uh, with their lightweight um, because I, I, I handled a Buck you know, for the lightweight one, but it's still the backlock's way down here. Um, so you don't really have something that can be one hand uh, use uh, within the knife. Um, so I think that that's where the market is for that. If you do have a backlock, I mean, having a one-hand operation is much more enjoyable. Uh, so that's where I think they should have went with it. So um, I think this is probably like, this This should have been probably the buck uh, 110 upgrade. Uh, but I like it. I'm going to do a review on it, send it out for steel testing. But S35 for... Um, again, it's MSRP is like 120, uh, but you can get that uh, probably going to be through uh, White Mountain Knives uh, for uh, less. So that's going to probably be like $80 or something. But we'll see how the pricing comes out on that. So thank you for sending that. Thank you for sending the other one uh, as well. And then Steve, uh, I don't know if he's still here or went to sleep yet, uh, but uh, this is one of his knives, so he allowed me to check out the Marksman. So if you haven't checked out a marksman, I mean, this is something that, uh, I got to get the timing right on it. 
you got to get the, you got to just at least try one. I would say buy this thing, but uh, you got to at least try a marksman uh, for that. And also even the PM2 uh, is something that he sent over. Um, and I don't know how left-handed folks do this. I mean, this is not left-hand friendly. Uh, most things are kind of ambidextrous uh, in use, but I mean, other than like doing like, I don't know how you like kind of funny grip it and drop it down. I mean, it doesn't seem left hand friendly for that knife uh, for the compression lock. Um, so uh, definitely uh, good for flipping as uh, far as the true f uh, spidey flicks and everything. Uh, and then PM2 is a nice one. So eventually I'll probably pick that up. And really the pricing on it's not bad um, when you consider what you get. Uh, and also it is something that um, is one of those things of like you should have one of these or should experience it at one point. And then on that note too, um, Blade Centered uh, is allowing me to check out a Chris Reeves knife, which is awesome. Uh, so I sent him over uh, my Medford that I just did the review on. He's going to send me over a Chris Reeve uh, small suspense, small sabenza, because uh, I haven't really experienced one. I, I kind of handled it at the show, uh, but I haven't had one and kind of handled it more spend a little bit more time with it. So that's going to be really cool to be able to see that. That's another one of those things where it's like, if you haven't handled a Chris Reeves knife, uh, then, well, what are you doing? Uh, so I should be able to do that and check that out uh, for the knife, which is just awesome. Uh, Nemesis, um, Ozarks. Uh, so we're also going to have a lot of the micro knives. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of the reviews coming out for this knife, uh, for the Bastion. Uh, this one I actually bought, so this one wasn't, Oh, you wrote a large on yours, so like you're going to buy a large Sabenza, Zach? Uh, but uh, this is one I actually purchased uh, before, but then this is one that actually got sent out to the Passeron group as well. Uh, but a lot of them, the, I would say this is a micro knife, because uh, some of the minis are, yeah, they're not this mini. Uh, so this is a, I mean, in comparison to even this knife, I mean, this is like um, ladybug size, uh, but actually more usable than ladybug is this one and this is a d2 knife and so um, if anybody wanted to pick something like this up uh, bastion blades uh, is the discount code you get 20 percent off uh, so for the pass around group um, they offered a discount co code for it so bastion blades at bastiongear.com you can buy anything on their site so if you wanted to get um, accessories if you want to get knives um, also their codes work when they have sales and they have sales like every month to two months so um, I think I got this for about $25, and then the normal price on it is like 40 And then also you can get uh, their new knife, which is the cleaver, and then you can get that in S35 uh, for that. So this is going to be coming out quite a bit, and I'll have to review for this as well uh, for the knife. And then for subscriber side, um, so really um, there's only five, five on right now, which is... Great, thanks for joining. I was just putting my knife back together. I figured I'd do a video on it. Uh, and then if you guys have any questions, let me know as well. But the Provoke um, growing on me, st still still nerving. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, but we're going to check that out uh, for um, for these knives here. Uh, but um, in the subscriber side, uh, right now, uh, before I started the video, I was at nine... 979 um, so 21 more folks to sign on so if you're one of the 21 people that have watched a few videos and enjoy the content uh, then uh, I would ask that if you want to just press the button so subscribe uh, basically a thousand is kind of that that threshold where YouTube is kind of like hey you're actually a legitimate channel uh, so uh, that's something that is a very big milestone for a lot of folks a lot of folks are working towards that a goal um, working to get that so you can actually be a little bit more of a partner with YouTube uh, so that's something that yeah it's very close now so uh, that's where it's just you know it's like why would that happen like I remember when starting when I was just trying to get to a hundred and like it was just like uh, so I started with that with knife beater it was like I wrote some comments on one of the things like why don't you start a channel or like be a guest on mine and then so I started a channel and uh, here we go uh, so almost a thousand. Uh, so some folks are doing well. Zach's like like seven something, almost eight hundred, I think, 
uh, Jack Farmboy is like eight something as well. So I uh, work together a lot with the other channels to try and uh, just provide feedback, and also to uh, help folks out as far as content side. Uh, so that's something that's really good. And then if you have any questions, uh, let me know as well as far as what you're thinking. And this actually got better too uh, for the flipping action uh, for the large pillar. And then um, I did find that the information was incorrect on CRKT's website. Uh, so when I initially uh, wrote it out, uh, yeah, great community. But uh, so for uh, this one, I when I wrote, I did the video on it, uh, CRKT's website said that there was only 0.3 ounces difference between uh, this knife and then the G10 version. Uh, but uh, it's actually, uh, according to like Blight HQ, and then I checked with JT's Knife Life, uh, it's actually like 0.8 difference. So uh, there is uh, more of a difference than a, a nickel and a penny. Uh, so there's probably like a quarter and a nickel or something. So it's still, I mean, it's not a lot of weight difference. It still has the weight redu reduction pockets on this, uh, but uh, it, it did get better as far as the flipping action. Uh, I was having a, a heck of a time uh, on the live stream uh, with the flipping action of this knife where like, uh, my fingers were slipping off of it. I wasn't able to get it to flip properly. Um, but uh, the large pillar, if you don't have a, a pillar, um, then I would recommend getting the large and not the small one. Uh, even if you have smaller hands, I would recommend getting uh, the large. Um, again, not a large knife, but uh, it is the larger uh, knife. Because uh, even if you have a smaller hand, if you, even if you want to use this side of it, it's going to be better than the small pillar. And then, there, of course, we're going to, going to give out more uh, steel options, different things, because I didn't not I didn't like the D2 with the the coated blade. I didn't like it. So that's why I went with this one. Uh, and maybe I'll customize it. I'll maybe put a copper backspacer or something like that. But I was going to take that backspacer out, uh, but it only weighs 0.1 ounces. So I was like, yeah, why? I just put it back in there. And so... It is a little different coloration because stainless steel, aluminum, stainless steel. Uh, so that's something that's a little bit different with that uh, for the knife itself. Um, any other questions, concerns, issues, um, things going on with you guys? Uh, but that's kind of all I was going to cover with it. Uh, we had also uh, this one, oh, also the, uh, Jack Farnbury uh, provided this knife too. Uh, so the K-Bar Dozier. Uh, this is one that I didn't have before, so this is something that was kind of interesting to try out. Like it is, again, that working knife. It is something that is uh, really good. And so if you don't have a K-Bar at uh, Dozier, you should probably consider getting it. It's kind of uh, reminds me of like Lego colors or something as far as this knife. Uh, so we have more people coming on too, and it's late. Where are you guys at? I mean, it's like 11 o'clock here. I think it's 11 o'clock. But anyway... Uh, but uh, this is a pretty good one uh, for uh, the price. Uh, it's like t normally $20. Line here listening heads. Play HQ. Oh, what do you say? Green Satin D2 for this? Oh, large pillar. Okay. Green G10. Oh, oh, did they just bring out that one? That's actually pretty awesome. So, so yeah, I mean, with anything that comes out for CRKT, they were kind of pushed to do that now from Blade HQ because a lot of the exclusives came from Blade HQ, um, really ordering it as far as like getting the 12C27, getting the S35 one. That was Blade HQ um, ordering those specifically. Uh, so it wasn't on CRKT's site, um, but then we found that while well, those are selling, so if, if I guess if people are willing to pay an extra ten twenty dollars for a knife, well, of course they're going to bring it out. Uh, so the Pilar has been their their highest selling knife um, that they've had recently. Uh, so the the more popular it is, the more you're going to get it. It's going to be uh, something that will uh, come out and uh, be good. Well, Steve, you should get Steve get this knife, and then get the Mark Hyer scale. Because on the other one, unless they changed it, uh, it does not have the weight relief pockets in it. Uh, so no, 
So this is going to be lighter. Um, or wait until... Well, I guess wait until they have one with a different steel. So you're going to have to see if there's a, a weight relief pocket for the other one. Uh, so I guess it doesn't really matter for that. Uh, but uh, if this was uh, one that had a better steel on it, I would say get this one and then get uh, the one with the... Um, and then put in my car scale on this. Yeah, it's not D2, and that's where I was, like, initially I was saying it, and I was like, okay, well, it's not D2, so, um, but otherwise, I'll buy two of them, and then sell off the other one, because somebody would buy a large pillar with a G10 scale, and then you're going to have a satin blade anyway, so take the D2 blade out of the other one, put it in this one, and then get your Mark Harris scale. I think that will work out really well. Um, although one of the things I think JT's was saying that um, the black one wasn't fitting exactly correct. Now it's going nasty renegade, eight in the morning. So yeah, it's it's good and early for you. It's light for us. But I think that's what you should do with that, Steve. So sorry, you didn't drink some tea. So I think that's going to be the best thing uh, for that. Uh, check on this uh, the. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of the origins for things, um, uh, I I think I started this back in March of 08, or not 08, 18, so 2018 is when I started, so, um, so on the current things I should get to 1,000 uh, before uh, it gets to a year anniversary, which is fantastic, I uh, wouldn't expect to be there. Uh, so no, still not to like the, the like slicey dicey level of like I think it's like fifty five hundred or something like that. Uh, so uh, we'll see how that works out. But if there's anything that you guys want to see more so on the channel, uh, let me know as well. Um, I was even talking to Steve about it. Like, would you guys even want to know what, like my favorite snacks or something? Like if I find it, like something that's really good, um, like um, like would you even care about that? Like if I had a like a an off-topic type of playlist where I just talk about that type of stuff because it seems like some of that interaction would be a little bit better, some of that uh, personal touch type of thing instead of the, the regular views plus the other one. Uh, so I don't know how that would work out uh, and if that would actually work out pretty well. Yep, take care, Steve. You got to get some sleep. Uh, yeah, I mean, favorite drinks, uh, something like that because uh, I know... Um, uh, folks have like the like um, slicey they have the brews and blades like people have what you're drinking uh, type of thing for that uh, but um, I personally don't drink like it's not something that I I, I do uh, so I mean I'm drinking tea right now um, and then I drink coffee uh, but there's not really going to be like the special microbrew of the day even though, like, Oregon has a lot of microbrews, so, I mean, we got even the license plate for, like, the the wine country, uh, license plates and everything else for Oregon, uh, so that's where I am, if you didn't know. Uh, so, uh, those things, I think, are pretty interesting about the whole process. Um, and then, really, uh, what is it that you guys are looking for? I mean, it seems like uh, what's being provided is good, and then I'm always still trying to uh, get better and learn. Um, I am playing around with um, a testing method because I do want to do uh, a kind of a hybrid to the rope to cut test, uh, but I, I'm not going to sit here and cut like like 900 cuts of rope. Uh, so um, I just I just don't have the I just don't want to. I don't like so like for the folks that do that, fantastic. Uh, it's great information. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so the one that I want to try and do, uh, I read an article from an old-timer, uh, which uh, was brought to me, uh, brought up by, I think, uh, Big, Big Brown Bear. Uh, so he let me know about the article and everything else. So I read through it. And they're talking about, like, like 25 pounds as far as the amount of pressure that you're putting down. Uh, so, so as you're putting down, cutting the rope, uh, you'd measure up to, like, 25 pounds. So... And then you would stop, uh, so that's kind of the edge end of that edge testing. Uh, so it wouldn't be down to when you physically can't cut rope anymore, or when you physically can't cut paper anymore. Um, the amount of pressure would relate to um, how the edge is doing. Uh, so that's why I was thinking if I did that and incorporated the uh, sharpness tester uh, in the same way to see 
uh, where it started, and then uh, at that 25 pounds, I, I guess what was the edge at that point, and I got to figure out a fixture system for that, uh, figure out how to do that as far as the weight, and then everything else. But uh, if there's anything else, if there's not anything else, then we'll probably end it out. Uh, we got people leaving uh, the channel, uh, so we got three people on. So all those three people, do you have anything, any questions? I'll leave it up. So I see the comments down here uh, when they do show up. So, oh, and we got one back. So we went three, now we went four. We had seven. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to kind of uh, close it out, put this stuff away, and we'll kind of go from there. So type it up if you have any questions. Uh, if not, then uh, have a, a great morning. Favorite sharpening device? Um, right now, uh, I just have probably the the crutch was actually a pretty interesting system. So if you haven't checked out that video, uh, and then he did actually elevate that. Uh, really, personally, I want to learn uh, more the actual activity of freehand sharpening because I think like a lot of those things are skills that that are lost. Uh, so even like back to like tying a tie, uh, those type of things, like people forget and people don't know. I don't know how to tie a bow tie. Uh, but I want to do the freehand sharpening, um, the Nanoa 400 stone that uh, I was able to borrow from Jeff Jewell. If you haven't checked out his channel, do that. Uh, he has a lot of sharpening things. Uh, but um, that Nanoa 400, I mean, that cut better than my King 250. Uh, so uh, for me, uh, the best system is going to be uh, me learning how to sharpen. Uh, and that's going to be, I think, the best way to go. Uh, and then, because I haven't experienced a lot of the other ones, a lot of the other ones make sense as far as like the Kami is probably uh, the best in a sense because it has the same angle to it. Uh, that That's where the Edge Pro is uh, lacking because you have to actually remove the knife and flip it around and put it back. Uh, so that's one thing that uh, doesn't really work out too well uh, for it. Uh, not much. Uh, I don't have a seismic. Now, we do have that coming around in the pass round, um, but I do have um, the Provoke uh, and then the Large Pilar, which is a new one. Uh, but uh, for the sharpening systems, uh, I think that's going to be... Uh, no, I don't I don't think so. Uh, for... Uh, it's, it's interesting. Um... But as far other than it being interesting, uh, I think that uh, you could actually, if you actually wanted to use this for a self-defense mechanism, I think that a self-defense weapon by itself would be more useful. Uh, this is something that was just really more interesting. So that question as far as uh, do you feel that it's worth $200? Uh, no, because I didn't buy it for $200. I had a discount code. Uh, so I don't know if Zach, if you bought it for $200, uh, but uh, they do have, uh, yeah, engineer is what you're paying for it and kind of a limited run also. So it's not something that it's not going to be that knife that they're selling hundreds and thousands of them. Uh, so that's what you're paying for, uh, for this. Uh, but uh, that's where now um, I guess if you don't want to pay $200 for it, I, I brought it up earlier. Uh, Mass Drop has it for 140 So if one if you're not going to buy it at 140 you're not going to buy it. Uh, so I think that's going to be a good price for it at that price point of 140 uh, to that previous question. Um, but uh, that's where uh, I would stick with that. So so if, if, you, yeah, if you're not going to buy it for 140 uh, then just like move on. Uh, but if 140 uh, is a, a good price for you, uh, that answers the question as far as is it worth two hundred dollars? No, because they're selling for one forty on Mass Drop. Uh, so uh, that is the MSRP, and then the market price uh, is one forty right now uh, for that. Yeah, but sharpening uh, systems uh, that's going to be uh, where it's going to be not just the regular sharpening. Um, and then uh, Mike Emler uh, is also um, I was on his live stream earlier, and then he was saying that he's going to try and do. Uh, sharpening system as well so he wants to get a system that is is as easy as a pull through system but as effective as regular sharpening uh, so I'm going to see what he comes up with for that 
And if anybody didn't know also that he is having a knife go into production. So uh, Mike Emler is the sharpener uh, for Fair and Forge. Uh, so all the knives that you get uh, that are produced by Fair and Forge, not through we, uh, but provide uh, built by uh, Fair and Forge in California, uh, he does all the sharpening. So uh, it was coined as the Emler Edge at one point. Uh, but uh, he has uh, one of his fixed blades, I think it's the Hornet, uh, that's going into production. So it's going to be a fixed blade uh, Wii knife as his design. Uh, so that's something that's good for some income for him uh, for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's going to be the, the system. So Zach, I guess what's your uh, ideal system? Do you have a KME? Yeah, the Seismic is going to be uh, interesting, but uh, the concern I have with the Seismic is any time that I've seen it used, um, it was opened and closed in such a manner and that was like, like, like they were opening and closing it like this, and then they were, when they're closing it, they're closing it like really slow. Um, so I don't know if the, that type of uh, deadbolt lock um, is going to swing like a, like a push button or like a, a plunge lock. That would be my concern with it, I guess. And none of the videos that I've seen have like flipped it open and closed it down, and that's where, um, that's why I don't know. I just don't know how that would be. But that is going to be part of the pass around group uh, for that uh, nasty renegade. So we're going to have a few channels that are going to look at it and actually now tell you uh, how it is and everything. And then really, uh, that is going to be a series. Uh, so um, other. Um, other designers will be able to use that because the current one is four inches long uh, for a blade, and that's that's kind of a bit long for uh, personally as far as the EDC. I would prefer not a 3.25 is kind of uh, my sweet spot for that. Um, oh, you're getting actually a lesson from Big Brown Bear? Did you do that? That's pretty cool. I should probably take a trip up there and do that myself. Uh, but that's that's really neat to do that. Um, my dog's whining at me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's the way to go, uh, Zach. So that's amazing that you would do that. So you even have his knife and get it down there and uh, learn how to do the sharpening with it as well. Yeah, because a lot of it's a learn a learn thing. And then once you get the muscle memory of it, uh, then it works out a lot better uh, for that. Uh, any other questions, concerns? Uh, so... Uh, good, yeah, it's good that he's a great teacher because I talked to him about them on the phone uh, when I was working out the, the steel testing uh, chart and questions on that. Uh, and then, um, yeah, like a wealth of knowledge. I mean, that's where uh, I think a lot of things are not really taken into account. And then that's what drives probably like people that have that type of knowledge crazy because then people like are just after, like, give me the best deal, best deal, best deal. Um, and then it's not really that because then there's other factors that come into play. There's um, the way it's ground, the heat treat, just like the LA police gear. Um, that's that is S35, but the heat treat's just rubbish. I mean, there's just like there's it's it's almost like they just took the the stock S35 and then ground it to whatever shape they wanted and then sent it off. Um, I don't think that's the case because I, I just don't know what the regular bar stock of S35 is for uh, Rockwell, but I think it was like, yeah, it was like 53 when it was supposed to be like 59 to 61 uh, for Rockwell. Uh, so there's a lot of things that come into uh, play uh, with things. And also uh, if like Zach with him learning, I mean, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could have the Ozark trail knife and still have it to use. As long as you're not a heavy uh, knife user, um, medium to light, uh, you'll be fine cutting open like a little box or anything like that uh, with it. So that's a lot of things that come into play as far as questions for um, new knives and whatnot. Yeah, Lansky. Um, so, I mean, it has a, a base system for Lansky. Uh, so that's where it's still that fixed system, it's still fixed angle. Uh, so that's where it helps out with that. And that's where really, uh, if anybody wanted to take a look at that crutch, uh, he does have that. Uh, so if you have whetstones ready, what's up, Peter? If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but uh, if you have that uh, a whetstone ready, uh, he actually created a base for it to actually uh, level it to the right surface uh, to do the crutch. And, and the it's really enjoyable uh, for 
um, the action of doing regular sharpening. Uh, I found it to be enjoyable, and then to do a reprofile with that uh, is actually um, very good. I mean, I got a good edge on it um, and everything, uh, and that was the only issue is like if you change from one stone to the other and it wasn't exactly the same height, your angle would change. Uh, so he was able to create a base that would be an adjustable angle, so I mean an adjustable height. So you could set the stone to the same level, and then if you change it to a different stone, then you could set that stone to the same level, and that takes away that different, or that issue as far as changing your sharpening angle. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, but yeah, KME I think is still the baseline uh, for a lot of that. Uh, a lot of people still love the other ones, but really if you if you don't sharpen a knife enough or if you don't use a knife to the point of being dull, um, you could probably just have somebody sharpen it and you're going to save yourself money and time and headache. You know, but if you want to learn the skills and the trade of it, um, then that's where um, that might be the fun of it is to learn those things and actually be able to uh, take care of that process uh, as well. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, thousand kind of came pretty quick um, for subscriber side, almost there. Uh, so I do have a few knives that they'll probably do a giveaway for. Um, but I really don't know as far as what to do. I don't have, I haven't solidified that as far as what I'm going to do for that thousand subscriber giveaway or thousand subscriber um, event um, to see what to do with that. Um, it, it's kind of surreal about the whole thing uh, as far as uh, getting to that point. Uh, providing information that people want to look at and uh, having the conversations with folks. Uh, so that thing is a really uh, the whole reason why I started this whole thing in the first place. Because uh, yeah, uh, Kershaw Skyline was going to be my knife. Like that was the only knife I would ever buy. I researched the heck out of it. I watched all the videos, read articles. Uh, Kershaw Skyline was going to be the one knife, and that was like forty bucks. And I was like, that's a lot of money to spend on a knife. Uh, and then. It was kind of like a weird thing to then uh, kind of progress along as we go. Uh, M16, uh, the, if you haven't experienced the M16, I personally, I don't like the M16s. Uh, I don't feel that the action's very good, the frame lock, um, the way that you have to um, release the frame lock. Um, yeah, kind of like you have to dig your finger in there to release it. Uh, I, I just haven't found that the M16 is very good. Like I've I've put one in hand before. I haven't tried a large one, but then like the ones that you get it like at a Walmart or something, uh, and then it just it, it doesn't seem good. I mean, even the the frame lock itself seems a little um, not kind of weak in a sense, but it's kind of a weird action, and it just uh, M16 is. Uh, a historic knife. I mean, it's been around for a long time. It's one of the bread and butters for CRKT, uh, but I personally don't like it. Um, if you um, have an experience, one, I would recommend you just try and try one first. Uh, if you have your local sporting goods store, uh, and then uh, see how it is for you. Because personally, um, I've tried it a few times and I don't like it. I wouldn't buy one. I wouldn't recommend one. If somebody said, "Oh, what knife should I get as far as a frame lock?" It wouldn't be a CRKT. Uh, M16, anyway. Uh, but that's just my thought on that one. Um, anybody else that's on, if you have a better experience with the uh, M16 uh, from CRKT, I mean, put it down below as well as help Peter out as far as his decision making on that. Uh, but just for me, not really one that I would recommend. Uh, if you love it as far as the look of it and it works for you, it's going to be a good hard user. Uh, for a knife, uh, it is that frame lock as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's one thing about knives now. It's just like there's, there's just so many different ones. Uh, it's hard to keep up with as far as things are coming out, things that are there. And that's why it's a lot of its preference as far as uh, what people think about it. Um, oh, yes, yeah. Cold Steel Recon 1, love that thing. Uh, I that's one I would recommend. So if if you're gonna go recon one, or if you're gonna go with M16, uh, then I would say close to recon one. Reason uh, is uh, that is extremely thin uh, for it. It carries well. 
uh, for being a full size, basically a full size knife. I mean, take a big pen, the little white one, the original one. That's how wide that thing is. It's just it's just just crazy as far as how big big the knife is. Uh, so that's where uh, I was surprised by that. Uh, I picked up one on the used market for a good price, uh, and then mine turned out to be the the XHP uh, as well. So so it worked out well for that too, since that's a um, extinct uh, steel for cold steel. Uh, but uh, I would recommend doing that one. Uh, or, yeah, so so if Zach, it seems like you don't like the M16 very much either. Uh, but Peter, uh, for the Recon 1, I would recommend it. Uh, find the, the right uh, blade uh, shape that you like. Um, but uh, it is a backlock as well. So I guess backing up from there, uh, it is going to be uh, ambidextrous. But also, do you like backlocks? Uh, so uh, like this is a backlock. There's a new one from Nemesis. Uh, so if you haven't checked out Nemesis, check out Nemesis too. Uh, but uh, this one's S35, uh, and then it's probably going to be on White Mountain, probably about seventy or eighty dollars. Uh, folks have coupon codes for Love Them Knives as well as Slicey Dicey, so you can get ten percent off from it. Uh, but uh, this is a solid one, uh, and then one hand use as well. So disengage and close. Uh, that's going to be the same thing as the cold steel, but uh, you got to kind of figure out what. There's like a few things that you go through, and that's kind of where I did with the um, my top five with a twist. It's like if somebody is new to it, uh, and then I would, if I laid out all those knives, you'd find out your personal preference as far as uh, what you like, uh, what you hate, and what you love. I mean, that's going to be kind of that baseline for it. And then once you have that, then you kind of build on it from there. But you got to start somewhere, uh, and then a lot of those are pretty inexpensive. Uh, to get into the understanding of what you actually like. Because uh, at first, you're kind of going off of what people say and say. So people will go, well, I love I love Benchmage, I love Spyderco, I love uh, Cold Steel, I love this and that. But they love it, uh, but you might just hate it. So that's where um, you might want to start off a little bit lower uh, and then go from there. Because uh, instead of you know, spending a lot of money for it, uh, for these knives that people just love and they, they rave about, uh, start off lower and then figure out um, if you like back locks, if you like compression locks. Because because this, if you're a left-handed person, I wouldn't recommend this knife. Like it's like, especially if you want to operate left-handed, uh, it just doesn't work well. I mean, I forgot how I even did that, but I think it was this way to go left-handed. Uh, so no, that would be my recommendation for that. Um, so backlock is good. So you're good, yeah. So if you know what it is, and you know what you like already, uh, then that's a good thing. Uh, but uh, out of those two choices, if you said to CRKT M16 or a Cold Steel um, Recon One, uh, Recon One would be my 100% recommendation. I would like sweep the other one off the table and just go with the Recon One. Find out um, the the blade shape that you like and that's the one I would recommend uh, for those two uh, but that's about it for that it'll be surprising if somebody after the live stream actually makes it to this point so I always have it fun to kind of uh, throw something out there um, let me see what word I want to use uh, so so one of my sons likes uh, Megalodon as far as a monster truck so um, if somebody after a live stream is watching and you made it this far, congratulations. And write in the description, Meg Megalodon. I know you made it this far. I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing because I think last time I had dirigible. So if anybody doesn't know what dirigible is, it's kind of like a hot air balloon with an actual uh, frame in it. Uh, so that's the one that actually like caught on fire and was like a horrible, horrible accident uh, was a dirigible, I believe. Uh, but uh, so the word of the day, sponsored by Megalodon. Uh, but uh, that's gonna be, <laughs> yeah, it's just a word. It's kind of a thing. So, so somebody, Megalodon is like a prehistoric huge shark. Also, um, also the I forgot what knife company now. Uh, Real Steel has a Megalodon knife. 
Uh, but that's a very large shark. Hey, banter 24 7. Just coming on at the last minute. So uh, he's doing really well. If you haven't checked out Banter 24 7, uh, he, um, I like the way that he thinks. I mean, no real fancy stuff, just kind of talking about things, talking, talking about different process, uh, talking about how he wants to do things. Uh, but yeah, that's what a megalodon is for Zach. Uh, but I threw that out there just to see if anybody after the live stream would actually watch it and make it to that point. So if I see any comments in the um, description or the, the comment section that says Megalodon, I knew that they made it that far. That's pretty cool. Um, but uh, it would be kind of surprising, too, because this is 55 minutes long. And if somebody, I guess, had me talking to them for 55 minutes, I guess that's not too bad. Um, maybe I'm in the back while they're working or something, but... Uh, yeah, 55 minutes, Megalodon. I drank some tea again. Uh, so, uh, what else do we got? Uh, anybody have anything else, comments or anything else? Uh, if not, we'll count down. We'll give another minute. And then we'll close it out. Eight people on, so fantastic. Uh, but, I don't know if I'm... Can somebody check? Did I make it to a thousand yet? Did I? Maybe? Closer? So before I started this video, I was at um, eight, eight seventy nine. No, nine seventy nine. Sorry, nine seventy nine. Uh, so I had twenty one more people to go uh, to make it to one thousand. Um, so I don't know if I made it anywhere closer to that yet. Uh, but uh, we'll kind of see. Sorry, it looked like like the screen froze because I didn't move at all. Uh, but uh, that's where. Um, Hey, Christopher, what's up? It's been a while. Yeah, it's um, it's surprising. I mean, it's almost a thousand. It's kind of, I mean, it's it's higher than what I thought I'd get to when I first started. I remember, um, like, even for YouTube, they give you, like, a little, like, congratulations when you make it to a hundred. Like, they don't do that very much when you get higher. Like, maybe when they get to a thousand, there'll be another one. But I think when I made it to, like, 500 or something, there was, like, a like an airplane that says like your subscribers could fill a whole airplane or something. Uh, and then the first one was like a, a hundred and there's like a little, little um, fireworks and everything else. So let's see what happens when I make it to a thousand and then kind of go from there. Uh, but Christopher, how you been? Uh, it's been some time. I mean, hopefully things are going well for you as well. Uh, but if you have any questions or anything, comments, and uh, let me know as well uh, for any of that. Uh, but, Let's see if I didn't cover anything else on the table. One of the most important people in the YouTube my freebie community. I don't know about that. I mean, that's like... <coughs> <coughs> Apologize for that. I hope you didn't blow anybody's ears out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I uh, appreciate the comment. I uh, don't know if that's going to be the case, but yeah, well, I mean, fantastic. Um, if that's the case for it, um, it's um, it doesn't pay anything. It's more for enjoyment, talking to people, helping folks out. Uh, so that's really where a lot of it comes down to, I uh, guess I spent more on things, um, being, doing the YouTube review and talking to people. Uh, uh, so that's one thing that's kind of interesting about it. Like, uh, so if anybody ever tells you that, um, that collects knives, that they'll never afford like a Chris Reeve knife because it's too expensive. And then they bring out like 50 knife rolls of $10 knives. It's just like, like, there's your knife right there. Just stop buying any of those knives and buy the one you want. Um, so that's something that's, um, that's interesting about uh, the YouTube side of things. So when you do reviews, um, at least when you first start out, a lot of times it's difficult because you're, you're, you're buying for content because uh, you want to let people know about it. You want to, because uh, people want to see things. Uh, so that's the one thing that's different about it. You're buying for content and what you like as well. Uh, but 
it, it, sometimes you can't just save up and like, okay, well, I'm not going to buy anything else for a month and then you guys just won't see anything. Uh, but at least now we're getting to a point where now we're able to get knives, get companies to help out. The Pastron group is, is great uh, for that. Uh, Nemesis uh, just sent these over. Um, so, um, yeah, it works out. Um, but it's a lot of work. Uh, so uh, if anybody wants to get into um, knife reviews and this type of uh, realm, uh, just know it. I mean, it's it's fun, but it, it still is a lot of work and trying to be consistent with it. Uh, it is uh, is a lot. Dude, you got a gold class knife. Ugh, that's expensive. Which oh, it was the Benchmade, right? The it was a was it the Griptilian? Zach, was that the mini Griptilian that you picked up? I forgot which gold class you were getting, because uh, the the gold class that I was looking at uh, was. Uh, the 940 with silver twill, Damascus steel blade. I think Benchmade last time I was there, it's sitting on their wall uh, just in, for gold class. And that's before I knew what the gold class was. And then like, I was talking with the person, people, I was like, oh, how much is that one? And they're like, like $800 if you can find it. But like it's that was like three years ago or something for the model. So if you want it now, it'd probably be like $1,500. Like, Oh, okay. Yeah, that's no, that's not gonna happen. Uh, so, I no, appreciate it, Peter. So I don't know how long you've been. I, I don't recommend recognize the name on it. So I'm sorry. I don't know how long you've been with the channel. So uh, welcome aboard. Hopefully you subscribe. Um, so that's what we we're talking about earlier. Uh, but uh, let's see what else we got. So oh, it's a bug out. Okay, so gold class bug out, and that's probably amazing. Oh, well, that's interesting. Why? I wonder why Benchmade's cases. Well, are they taking it all to maybe Shot Show? That's why their cases are empty. Maybe. Uh, so, uh, my battery's getting low too. So, uh, but uh, appreciate everybody being on. Uh, I have to go to sleep myself, and then I work tomorrow, but later at least, so I get to sleep in a little bit. Uh, but I do have kids, so they're probably gonna wake me up early. Uh, but We'll see how everything goes. Oh, that's amazing with the gold class knife, though, especially now for the Benchmade bug out, which is like the, I mean, probably their bread and butter right now as far as what's selling. Because it's a good knife, uh, but it's kind of an interesting thing for that. Uh, yeah. So hour and two minutes that I've been gabbing. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And. Thanks again for joining in. Uh, we'll end it off for that. Uh, if you guys want any, uh, leave any comments down below. Again, Blind Knife Review is like today for some of you. Uh, so 4 p.m. Uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, so adjust it for wherever you are. Uh, so we're going to have uh, myself. We have uh, Jack Farmboy, uh, Blue Car Survival, uh, The Knife Beater, uh, JT's Knife Life, EDC with Aaron, and I'm missing somebody. Who am I missing? Oh boy. I'm missing somebody. There's seven of us on the first round. Maybe I didn't say me. I think I didn't say me. No, so, so, yeah, so we have yeah, Blue Car Survival, uh, JT's Knife Life. Cool, for a few months now. Awesome. Uh, so, no, Slicey didn't do it. Um, so we'll see. Maybe we'll invite him to the second one if he wants to do it. Uh, but um, Blue Collar, uh, Knife Beater, uh, Jack Farm Boy, uh, JT, EDC with Aaron, somebody. That's horrible. Oh, well, it's late. But thanks for your time. Tune in for that. Hopefully it goes amazing. And